Hi folks and welcome to Attica Armory. So today I'm going to show you guys how to resolve kind of a common problem that's particularly pronounced in some of the Gen 4 Glocks. Now I recently took this Gen 4 Glock 19 and this 42 out to the range and I noticed that uh, there was quite a bit of instances where I was getting brass just right in the forehead. So um, I'm going to show you guys how to fix that. It's actually a pretty easy fix and uh, hopefully that'll, that'll kind of help alleviate some of those problems for you guys. Now before you jump into doing any real mods, uh, just make sure that you're actually uh, sporting the latest parts. The areas that you want to look at most carefully are going to be your recoil spring. So you want to make sure that you've got the latest version of that recoil spring for your gun. And you want to actually look at the ejector. You'll be able to see the part number just stamped right onto that. All right, so here's our extractor. And if you guys are interested in what kind of camera we're using, I'll make sure and leave you a link to that in the description. Now you can see here that essentially our case is sitting relatively flush against the breech face here and this is how you kind of want it to be but look at all that space so let me show you what's happening when this thing cycles so you can kind of visualize what the issue might be now when your slide starts moving back that little gap is going to close up basically just like that and your extractor claw is going to pull that case out of the chamber and as the case clears the chamber, you know, the chamber is going to keep it somewhat straight. But once it clears the chamber, just in that little microsecond or two before it actually hits the ejector, this case could be coming out of here either straight like it is right now, or it could be coming out at this kind of an angle, kind of sideways, or it could be coming out at this kind of an angle right here but you can see that there's a lot of room for inconsistency so when this thing is striking the ejector rod you know it could be hitting at any which angle meaning that you're not going to be getting consistent you know four o'clock three o'clock one o'clock whatever ejection that's predictable it's going to be all over the place sometimes it's going to be at one sometimes it's going to be at four sometimes it's going to be right back at six o'clock square in the kisser. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the back plate and pull that whole extractor assembly out of there. Now before I pop this uh, extractor in there, I'm gonna go ahead and finish uh, these flat surfaces here on the top and bottom with a little bit of this uh, 2000 grit auto body finishing sandpaper and I just want to smooth this surface out a little bit and you're going to want to make sure you've got a nice flat backing surface for your sandpaper so you can keep it as uh, flush as possible. That's really about all it takes. I don't want to remove all of that coating. I just kind of want to aid in some of the uh, break in of that. Let's do the other side. And that's about all it really takes. I am just going to kind of quickly clean and lube our parts before I stick them back in there. Thank you. 
All right, so if your extractor is in good shape, your ejector and your recoil spring are all current part numbers and you're not seeing any issues there, there's one last thing that you're going to want to inspect really closely. Let me show you. I'm going to kind of use this flathead screwdriver to demonstrate a little bit. So when you fire the gun, the cartridge gets extracted out of the chamber, it comes back and it hits this forward face of the ejector rod. Now, the direction that it ejects in is going to depend greatly on the angle of this forward face. So what you want to do is you want to have this thing angled kind of back like that and kind of out like that and away. So what I'm seeing on this one is that it's definitely angled back like that. It's definitely got that backward tilt, but it doesn't have much of an outward tilt. So that could be some of the reason why the rounds are just coming back and instead of going off to, you know, the four o'clock area over here, they're coming straight back and over and hitting me in the forehead. I'm gonna try to change this angle. I'm gonna give it just a little bit of an outward tilt and I'm gonna maintain that backward tilt like that. You've gotta be really careful when you're working on this. Don't remove too much metal, but definitely um, this looks like it could be our culprit. So I'm just gonna be using this small flat file and I'm just gonna slowly and carefully work to kind of alter that angle. Alright, so here is a close-up view of our ejector and that new angle that I kind of put into it. You can see on the outside of the ejector, I just kind of added a little bit of a bevel. So when the extractor pulls that case out and slams it into that ejector rod, it's going to kind of make it deflect out into the, the right of the gun instead of up and over and into my forehead. At least with this particular gun, this seemed like it was the most likely thing that was causing this based on what I saw. So let's take it out to the range and let's see if our changes made any difference. So here's my shooting bench and you can see that the brass is kind of accumulating down here at about 5 o'clock roughly. It's in a good spot and it's definitely not in my face which is nice. So there you have it folks. I think you have some good viable courses of action that you can take to diagnose and remedy and repair any of these BTF or brass to face ejection issues that you might be having with your Glock. And with that, we hope that this video was helpful for you. We hope you enjoyed it. And uh, please remember to give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you again next time at Attica Armory.